Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. In the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, a string of shootings in the Bakersfield area last night, including one involving a sheriff's deputy. We'll have the latest on all three investigations coming up. A massive spike in reported COVID-19 cases yesterday in Kern County as the state activates the mass fatality program for the first time. We'll tell you what that means coming up. And the Bakersfield pastor who wowed judges and America with his voice stands on stage with four other finalists to hear who voters will choose. The nail-biting moment on this Wednesday, December 16th, 2020. Good morning at 5 a.m. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen in studio here with Taylor Schaub. It was a nail-biting moment and a lot of people stayed up late to watch last night or maybe just cheated and looked <laughs> online before they went to bed, Taylor. That was me. I did cheat. I had to look at the, uh, the East Coast results because I could not wait to find out if Jim Ranger won. Kevin, did you watch it live last night? No, I did not. Uh, spoiler alert, I found out uh, this morning I did get online and take a look and see what happened. And, you know, regardless, first or second, Jim Rager is a star here in Bakersfield. He's a great guy. And uh, I think uh, somebody will pick him up and give him that uh, recording contract uh, regardless. But congratulations uh, to all the contestants on The Voice, and in, including Jim Ranger. Great guy. Let's talk about our forecast for you on this uh, Wednesday. I had to think of the day of the week. It all runs together, right? And uh, a lot of talk about the fog and uh, no major fog here in the valley right now you can see on our camera network just keep in mind if you're going to be traveling 99 northbound right there at the split at airport drive there is some construction crews to slow down uh, they've got their lights on uh, but just slow down in that area and then mohawk and rosedale looking good let's take a look at the visibility and you can see fresno is better this morning at six miles eight miles for bakersfield but then areas north of sacramento down to zero so just depends on where you're at you'll see the fog we have issued a dense fog advisory for the northern portion of Kern County along the I-5 and the 99. So uh, watch for that uh, if fog does form this morning. Uh, currently, we're at 38 degrees, north wind at 3 miles per hour. And as we take a look at the temperatures today, upper 50s expected. That's where we were at yesterday. And uh, sunny skies, 25 degrees in Tehachapi right now, southeast wind at 7. And as we take a look at the winds, not a problem at this time. Only a light breeze expected as we go throughout today. And you can see in the Tehachapi area, sunny skies and temperatures back into the 50s. We're we're still looking at a slight sliver of hope, chance of rain coming into the forecast tomorrow. I'll have more on that coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Kevin. We begin this morning with the COVID numbers here in Kern County and a massive spike in reported cases yesterday. Kern Public Health reported more than 2,000 new cases Tuesday. That staggering number includes 659 positive cases out of our prisons and 141 positive tests in our skilled nursing facilities. Nearly 21,000 people are currently infected with the virus and recovering at home. Currently, 292 people are in the hospital and 66 in the ICU. 470 people have died since March. Our single day record is now December 9th. That's when we saw 1,213 positive cases. Kern County falls into the San Joaquin Valley region. According to the state, our region's ICU capacity is just 1.6%. For reference, when any region falls below 15%, it triggers that three-week stay-at-home order. And health officials are still playing the waiting game. The first batch of vaccines was expected to arise yet, uh, yesterday, but health officials say those vaccines are now expected to hit local hospitals tomorrow. County Public Health is expecting 6,000 doses of the vaccine to be distributed among hospitals by the health department. Dignity Health expects to receive roughly 2,000 vaccines. Kern Medical will get another 1,000. Kern Public Health says it is expecting to continue getting weekly shipments of the vaccine in the immediate future. And we learned yesterday that the Latino COVID-19 Task Force launched a mental health hotline. The hotline is set to connect those with COVID-19 concerns with mental health experts, health counselors, and other resources. The hotline is available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Conversations are confidential and anonymous. That number is 525-5900. And the Latino COVID-19 Task Force continues to host testing sites this week. Today, you can head to the Virginia Avenue Park between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. for a free test. There's a free testing site every day through Saturday. 
For all local testing sites, head to kernpublichealth.com. The interactive map shows you where you can find all the testing sites near you. You can also click on each testing location to find out more information. While COVID-19 continues to dominate headlines, local health experts are reminding you not to forget about other diseases impacting the valley right now. Yesterday, medical professionals held a virtual conference on what one doctor calls the triple threat. COVID, the flu, and of course, valley fever, a potentially deadly illness caused by breeding toxic spores found here in the soil of the Central Valley. Our point of talking about the triple threat is to keep all th at least all three of these diseases, and there are really more, uh, at uh, the attention of, for sure, the medical community, but also the public. In 2019 alone, California saw 9,000 valley fever cases, a record for the state. More than 3,000 of those cases were reported in Kern County alone. As for the flu, the CDC says cases tend to peak between December and February. As COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations surge in Kern County, Dignity Health Bakersfield and the Kern County Hospital Council are starting a weekly series of media roundtables today to answer questions about topics such as vaccine distribution, ICU capacity, staffing, treatment options, virus testing, and community safety. The roundtables are closed to the public, but you can tune in to 17 News at 5 for an update on the latest COVID-19 information here in Kern County. And in another grim update, the state has activated the mass fatality program for the first time. As over 140 Californians died from coronavirus on Tuesday, Governor Gavin Newsom is ordering 5,000 additional body bags. At the Fresno County Coroner's Office, empty body bags are lined up and a refrigeration truck sits empty for now. The Fresno County Sheriff's Office has been preparing for the worst with refrigerated trucks on standby that can fit up to 50 bodies. As the governor activates the mass fatality program, they'll coordinate with county sheriff's offices. The road from having no COVID vaccine to two vaccines appears to be a short one. This morning, a second vaccine is likely just days away after an FDA review confirmed Moderna's vaccine is as effective as Pfizer's with 94% effectiveness in preventing symptoms and infection. Like Pfizer, anyone getting the vaccine will need two shots, but Moderna's vaccine does not require the deep cold that Pfizer's requires. That should make it easier for smaller hospitals and clinics that don't have a deep freezer. Its cold chain requirements are actually less stringent in that it requires uh, a cold that's that of a freezer that like the freezers we have at home. With approval expected as soon as Friday, nearly 6 million Moderna doses will start shipping next Monday. More Pfizer doses will also ship with 1,100 nursing homes getting their first doses. Meanwhile, the FDA authorized the first at-home rapid antigen test for COVID yesterday. It's a simple nose swab with results in 20 minutes. The kits are expected in drugstores in January. Switching gears now to entertainment news. You watched it right here, the season finale of NBC's The Voice. Last night, before the winner was announced, Bakersfield's own Jim Ranger paid tribute to his roots. Ranger and his coach Blake Shelton were seen having fun while singing a Bakersfield favorite. Ranger is one of five artists to make it all the way to the season 19 finale. Out of the five, it came down to Jim Ranger and 15-year-old Carter Rubin, with Rubin and coach Gwen Stefani taking home the win for this season of The Voice. But Jim Ranger did come in second place, and we just want to congratulate Jim. You made it Bakersfield incredibly proud, and just thank you for sharing your journey with us here on TV 17 for the past few months. I know. He ha had such an amazing run on the show, and, uh, you know, we were talking. There were two country artists in the finale, and Tammy kind of predicted that that could split the vote. And so who knows if that's what really happened, but I think Kevin's right. I think that... Uh, some record company could come scoop up Jim Ranger because he is just fantastic. And congrats to all of them, including Jim. Swatch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider.
Welcome back at 524. The clock is ticking with only nine more shopping days before Christmas. Walmart has posted deadlines for the last moment shoppers that can place online orders for both delivery and store pickup by Christmas. This Saturday at 2 p.m. local time is Walmart's deadline for free two day shipping on eligible items. Next Monday is the deadline for free next day delivery. And if you'd like to pick up at the store, you need to place your order by December 23rd at 4 p.m. local time for in-store pickup on Christmas Eve. And in more business news, buy now, pay later plans are booming. Services like Afterpay give consumers the option to break up their purchases into installment payments without interest or fees. You know, behalf of consumers said the use of buy now, pay later is something or that is somewhat or very important in determining how much they spend during the holidays. Yet even more said they're concerned it will cause them to overspend, according to our recent survey by Cartify Data I, a data firm that tracks consumer spending. Further, 48% said buy now, pay later will allow them to spend at least 10 to 20% more than they would using a credit card. Tis the season for scams. Officials are getting a slew of complaints about thieves using text, calls, and social media to trick people into handing over their money. Liz McLaughlin goes over the biggest scams hitting consumers right now and how to spot them. In a time of record online sales, scammers are doing big business. What you're seeing is not what you're getting. Thieves offering up hard-to-find items from PS5s to even puppies. She was, you know, just the right age and she was white and brown. But for some hopeful pet parents well, like Erica Wilson, upfront payments can quickly turn into empty promises. I just didn't do due diligence. Buyer beware. According to the Better Business Bureau, pet scams now make up nearly a fourth of the scams reported to them. Don't buy a pet without seeing it in person. A warning that goes beyond puppy fever as pandemic precautions drive consumers to make more purchases online. I don't remember the last time I actually bought something inside uh -huh. the store. Scammers now targeting households expecting packages. $749 is being ordered from your Amazon account. Posing as well-known companies, thieves use phony notices to trick customers into handing over account or personal information. Your iCloud account has been breached. The FTC is now reminding consumers to delete or hang up on unsolicited messages, including ones touting access to a COVID-19 vaccine. You're not going to be getting any vaccine shipped to your house before hospitals get in, before first responders, before assisted living. Officials urging a sense of caution in a very virtual holiday shopping season. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. In many of these imposter scams where they pretend to be a well-known company or delivery service, they'll often provide a link or phone number to try to connect you to a phony customer service agent. If you get any messages like that, just remember to hang up or press delete. Then sign into your account or contact the company directly to see if anything is amiss. Switching gears to news around the nation now. As Joe Biden won the presidential election, we're hearing that for the first time from the Senate's top Republican, Tracy Potts has that story this morning and the latest from Capitol Hill, plus another vaccine on the way. Taylor, good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're talking vaccines and politics today. The FDA says Moderna's vaccine is just as effective as Pfizer's. Advisors dig into that data tomorrow. On the political front, President-elect Biden is adding more people to his team. NBC confirms that President-elect Joe Biden will tap former rival Pete Buttigieg to head the Department of Transportation, former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm as Secretary of Energy, and former EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy to lead climate efforts at the White House. This, as the Senate's top Republican says for the first time. I want to congratulate President-elect Joe Biden. I'm looking forward to working with him. President Trump tweeting overnight too soon. The president is still involved in ongoing litigation. Biden and Democrats are focused on electing two Georgia Democrats on January 5th, giving $5 million to runoffs that could tip the balance of power in the Senate. You voted as if your life depended on it. Well, guess what? Now you're going to have to do it again. In Washington, lawmakers are closing in on COVID financial relief. We're not leaving here without a COVID package. It's not going to happen. And the FDA is preparing to approve Moderna's vaccine as soon as Friday. Those vaccine, 
doses will start to be shipped as of uh, uh, 24 hours after the approval. Nearly 6 million more doses targeting health care workers, long-term care facilities, and nursing homes. President-elect Biden says he'll get the COVID vaccine sooner rather than later on the advice of Dr. Anthony Fauci, and he'll do it publicly. The White House says President Trump will get it as soon as his medical team says it's okay. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. Mayan Burrell, a black man sentenced to life in prison as a teenager, walked out of a Minnesota prison today after nearly two decades. The Minnesota Board of Pardons approved the commutation of his life sentence to a 20-year sentence and for Burrell to serve the, fir- the rest of his time on immediate supervised release. Burrell's case made headlines earlier this year after the Associated Press uncovered new evidence and serious flaws in the investigation into the 2002 killing of an 11-year-old girl who was hit by a stray bullet while doing homework at her dining room table. Last week, an independent panel of national legal experts recommended his immediate release after reviewing the facts and all of the available evidence. Mayan Burrell wants to thank the governor and the attorney general for the action they took today. He is very happy to have the opportunity to go home to his family and start the next chapter of his life. Burrell spoke to the Minnesota Board of Pardons yesterday in a Zoom hearing pleading his innocence. Burrell was 16 when he was sentenced and has always maintained his innocence. All right, thank the you. spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.